Bonjour everyone, Pentuf here today for a new video in which we're going to take a look at one of the weirdest mods I have the pleasure of download. It was made by Honking, if I'm not mistaken, and sorry if it's not the case. And it's literally a baguette being placed on the B1, the tier 4 French tank. It's only that, it doesn't change anything beside that, but I just thought it was so hilarious that I had to make a video on it. Just take a look at that, they are going in platoon and there are just three baggots lurking around trying to get what they need to get. It's just purely fun and it allows me to introduce a subject we didn't talk too much on that channel, at least for the past year, which is the whole subject of mods. To do a brief history of modes and to put some context, back in the good old days, all modes were allowed, as long as they were not cheating like aimbots, etc. But the problem is, um, when we didn't have that much players, cheaters were not necessarily an issue. It was not an issue because those mods were used by so many few people that they were not rigging any statistics. But as the game became popular, the mods got rigged more and more and more. Just take a look at that, it's a croissant. It's a croissant, Matilda, I didn't, I didn't take a look at that, what the heck. Okay, and uh, I was saying, as the game became popular, we have more and more players playing. And obviously, we have more people inclined to download cheats. And the problem is, Warning had to make a choice. Either try to select the modes that were uh, causing a problem to the game and uh, banning them, and as soon as you enter the game, they kind of scan your World of Tank Glitch files in order to find if there is a cheat and if there is your perma ban. Or they just said, okay guys, we remove all the possibilities of modding the game. Or at least the vast majority of possibilities, especially the ones that are modeling new tanks or uh, changing uh, the of tanks etc etc and the problem is they went for the second option and the problem with the second option is that well you don't have any more creativity the modes creator were left behind and they were not called to improve the game or anything or even have some partnerships with wargaming in order to release new stuff no nothing happened and wargaming just started banning all the players that were using too many mods even if for some of them, not all, but for some of them, they were banned out of nowhere and it was kind of unfair. And the thing is, I would like more unique to maybe try to add a new system when it comes to the banning machine and the mods. Because obviously, these kind of mods is not arming anyone, because the only one that can see the mod is our friend Honking that is playing with its tank. But that's it, that's it. For the others, they can't see it. So it's, so it's not a problem, it's not like it gave you a tactical advantage whatsoever or anything like that. And to be fair, it's a shame because if we take, for example, the latest tank being implemented, the Sphere, or even the 60TP prototype that just got a brand new camo, a lot of those mods allowed us to have either better graphics or at least better attachments because the one you see on the 60TP, modders already did it on plenties of tanks. They just copy past the attachment we had in World of Tank PC and put them on the tanks we have in World of Tank Blitz. For example, there are plenties of mods of the mouse on the internet having that little anti-air gun at the top of it like we have in World of Tank PC or even the mouse featuring the big oil tank at the back as well. And those things are adding some realism in to the game and this is the kind of things that we as the community love. And it also allows you to have more interesting YouTube videos because the overall aesthetic of your video is going to be better because everybody knows what the VK7201K looks like in Blitz because we all play the same game. But what about a VK7201K that would be different because of mods? It, also, it would necessarily make videos more interesting. So um, I still think Wargaming made the wrong decision because obviously when you allow the modders to mod, you involve the community and you make the game a little bit more interesting because after all, it's just a 7 versus 7 tank game and you can add as much new game modes as you want, it will still remain the same. So from time to time to have some fresh air added into the game, I think it would be cool if Wargaming 
allowed us to get those. Of course, there are still some mods that are allowed. The Tech Tree 1 allowing you to see every single tank being tested right now, or at least seeing in the garage every single tank that Wargaming added. Some of them not being released yet. It's a really cool one, and I use it for my videos. But beside those mods that don't have a direct impact on your gameplay, I don't think they are allowed. You need something that will not change at all the gameplay. And yes, maybe that Wargaming is considering that having an anti-air gun on the mouse is unfair because maybe it increases the shadow, uh, not the shadow, but the HUD of the tank, making it bigger, modifying the camo, I don't know, but still, this is how I see it, and I truly hope that at one point Wargaming will change their way of seeing those mods. But for the moment, as there is no system guaranteeing you not to encounter any cheaters, well, I think we have a lot of time on our hands. And it also allows me to talk about cheaters, because uh, we talked a lot about them on that channel. Every time Wargaming is releasing a new security system in order to prevent hackers or cheaters, it takes them like one and a half week to find a way to turn it to turn it around and not having to bother with it anymore. And the problem is, it seems like every single cheater that is cheating in World of Tank Blitz has one or two weeks of advance on Wargaming, and it's extremely frustrating for Wargaming's team, I guess, especially the security one. But hey, that's how it is. You have to compete uh, because it's a competition with guys that are modding as well. Because after all, it's just a bunch of guys working for a company uh, trying to not make the game viable with modes. And on the other side, people having fun trying to violate the rules of the game. So well, that's it. I don't have anything else to say. I just wanted to highlight the mod Honking Made. And by the way, once again, thank you, Honk. And well, if you enjoyed, feel free to subscribe, like, and share. Personally, I'm going to see you soon for a new video and tell me in the comments what you think about mods. Do you think they add something to the game? Or do you think that Wargaming made the right choice by not allowing any single one of them that could modify the HUD or at least aesthetic of the tanks in the game? See ya!